On this episode of Build a Kingdom, we are not talking about a 53 Chevy panel truck. We're actually going to talk about fuel system, fuel systems, fuel cells. <laughs> All right, we're going to start with mounting the fuel cell in your car if you decide to go with a fuel cell over a stock tank. Uh, this is Don's car, obviously, because I run a stock tank in mine. Um, as you can see, it is mounted in front of the rear axle. There are weight distribution reasons for why you do that. For one, the stock tank is in front of the axle. So why would you mess it up by moving it behind the axle? It does make it a pain in the ass to fill with gas. As you can see, Don has this contraption he's rigged up to fill it with gas. So there's that fancy stuff there. But if you're gonna go to a fuel cell, you need a fuel pump. Way over there, you can see it hiding up in the corner there. What is that, Don? That is a Walboro 255. Walboro 255 through a Corvette fuel filter and a fuel pressure regulator. You have to have a fuel pressure regulator because the stock one is in the tank on a Chevy Cobalt. So you lose it when you remove your stock tank. That fancy brass looking thing on the top of there is actually a dipstick. I've never seen one of those before. Where'd you get that? He made it. Oh, he made it. Yeah, you can't buy those. That's fancy people stuff. So you've got your feed line going out the top of the tank on that side to the pump, comes around the back to the fuel filter, pressure regulator, then it's going up to the front of the car over there, and then the other line coming up is your return line. And vent line. And vent line. Vent line going up in the vent car. Vent line over there. With a PVC valve on it. Yep, little filter on the end of it there. So, as you can see, there's some square stock welded in for a little frame there, and then an actual frame with a cage around the tank. And this fuel cell actually has a skid plate as well for protection, because we like to do things overkill. We like to make sure it's safe. Some top straps to hold your tank in. This is a pretty good way to mount your tank. Dropping your tank through the sheet metal floor and just bolting it through the floor is not the proper way to mount a fuel cell. It should have a cage around it, holding it in place so it cannot move. Now we'll go inside and look at the tanks we've got for our little science project. As you can see, stock tank. Jazz product fuel cell. Probably shouldn't have said that, but whatever. This is one of those aluminum eBay tanks. Um, this actually came out of Andy Shoemaker's prelude before he was part of Cobalt Crew. He didn't know any better, so it was probably getting weak. But as you can see, if you look real close, one of the mounting tabs is already broke off with the vibration. So, we're going to show you why you don't buy those. But this stock tank, as you can see, the fill line is gone. This came out of my car because it was leaking, but not because it was punctured. The plastic welt from the factory where they press the bung in for the fill line cracked around the welt when the axle came up and hit it during that last wreck. So, something to keep an eye on, that plastic welt and fill line. But these tanks in general, polyethylene are a lot stronger than you guys think. All you guys say, race cars have to have fuel cells. Not necessary. Yes, stock tanks are three, almost three eighths of an inch thick, cross loop polyethylene, which is the same material as a fuel cell. The car makers go through a lot of trouble in testing to make sure these tanks are safe at highway speeds in a crash. So this tank, stock tank, in my opinion, is as safe as a fuel cell when you put a skid plate, especially when you put a skid plate under. These here are for drag racing and I don't know what else, not much else. So even talking about pickup too. Yeah. About drag also, racing. also, this tank has it has rear exits for a drag race car. So when you let off on the gas going into the corner, the pump cavitates, and you don't have any fuel there. Dickinson Cages. He's a local dealer, so if you're in the Rochester, Western New York area, you 
hit up uh, BK Racing, you can get yourself a Dickinson cage. You guys have seen those on the channel before. Um, yeah, so we're going to start small with claw hammer. I also have a small hatchet too. And show you, now we haven't ever done this before. I'm just confident that this thing is going to just split without too much trouble. Nothing like you see in a violent crash. Not even close. This one? This tank has no business being in a circle track race car. Start with this, right? Yep, take it this way. It didn't puncture. It didn't puncture. It's right. That's, that's a pretty good, for a circle track tank, this is a pretty good one. It's not the cheapest it one. Yeah, as far as aluminum tanks are concerned, this one's actually kind of nice for an aluminum one. Those ones you guys see on eBay and on Amazon, those black ones, just do not buy that. Not if you're a street car. Those things are junk. So, you can claw hammer this thing. Yeah, you hit that one. Charge the chamber. <laughs> didn't even leave a mark. Barely left a mark. <laughs> I know how to do that. It doubted it, but you gotta remember this one also has a liner in it. Has a polyethylene liner like this. This has nothing in it, it's just aluminum. So, this is not sharp because I've been hitting stuff with it. Why not? Now I'm going to hit right on the weld to see if it'll spread the split. Try to strike the weight the edge, a little bit of weight the edge first. Oh, it's pretty good. Didn't puncture. So. It didn't puncture, but it definitely left a mark. No, no puncture. Just a little mark. Just a little mark. I feel like we should get the bottom of this one. I guess it doesn't matter, right? That split the tin. Split this. Split this. The metal. I don't feel anything in the polyethylene. Not so. Nothing. So I split the metal. Let me take my phone and get some close ups. So you can see it split the tin, but it didn't split the, the plastic liner. There's the claw hammer mark. Claw hammer, hatchet. Where are we? Claw hammer here, and I just missed the claw hammer mark with the hatchet here. So I guess we move up to the big guns now. Unless you want to hit it with a sledgehammer. Split it right on the weld. Ready? Yep. Just bounced right off. <laughs> yeah, that didn't even do anything. Where did you hit it? Nothing. Right on the sticker? Yep. Yeah, it just it just banged the tank is all it did. Banged the metal part. So I mean obviously we know jazz is a good fuel cell. It's been around a long time. Like a spear, basically, is 
what you're looking at for damage, or, unless you try to ride your wall like a skateboard. Or a rear tire with a hump still attached. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of those. Either way, this is going to be extensive damage. It blew a bolt out of the cover. <laughs> Man, I'm surprised it didn't pierce it, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah there's your <laughs> there's your puncture wound. I don't think I can get the camera to show you that. I think you can see that. Uh, that's leaking now. Uh, motor vehicle collision on the racetrack is way harder to view than that. You can see that it, it turned the white part of the polyethylene inside white, but didn't actually puncture it because there's water in there. See the water splashing around from this being outside of my house? It didn't puncture the tank, which is kind of what we expected to happen. So I'm, I'm kind of happy it worked out. Considering there's no skid plate either. Yeah, there's no skid plate. So that's a direct hit with an ax with no skid plate. I don't know what you call the front here. But most likely, if you're going to take a hit, it's going to be in this general area as you're driving down the racetrack. Punctured the rusty metal. I'm going to grab my flashlight. It didn't even leave a mark in there. Nothing. So, basically, if you're going to put a fuel cell in your car, you better buy a good one. Not that junk. If it's on eBay or Amazon and it's 50 bucks, you don't want it.
quarters, cable and wrap it around a couple times and it turns out lost. Yeah, a little extra. Keep the track, mm -hmm. keep the tank in the car. The tank, you get 18 gallons of gas in the tank at seven odd pounds per gallon. It's a lot of weight that's bouncing off the track all the time. Yeah, so you want to make sure it's secure. And if you guys are running, you know, high lap races, I know some of the bigger SCDR races down south, they're running 75 laps or a hundred laps or something. There's more than enough gas in that to get. That's the biggest that. tank you're reasonably going to fit in a mini stock. Yeah, so you guys are building cars, you know, everybody wants to complain about cost of building a race car. It's got a tank in it, a fuel pump. If it ran when you started building the car, then there's no reason to take this out. If the system is good and it's working, um, the only time you're going to need to upgrade a fuel pump is if you port and polish your motor. If you start working on your motor and you port and polish it, you're going to need more fuel because you got more air. That's going to be the only time you really have to do something. Even then, you're, you're, they're pretty good. Those stock, the stock pumps are, they pump a pretty good volume of fuel. So I just, they're always in the tank. They're always cool by the fuel. You don't have to worry about it. Put the wires up to it and go race it. My car still has a stock tank in it. The cars I built and sent down south, I think they both still have stock tanks in them. My last car still has a stock tank in it. Yeah, so I mean, now, I mean, Don's car, Andy's car, and Chris car all have fuel cells in them. I, I think they want to. Because my son's stock tank yet. This, like I said, this is my old stock tank, and the only reason it came out is because in that big wreck a few weeks ago, when Cole went under the back of the car, it bent the axle and compressed the suspension at the same time, and it actually hit the fill tube. And it cracked the weld on the back. So, uh, you know, but that tank's been in there for five seasons, multiple wrecks, two championships. Nothing wrong with the stock tank. Supposed to get laid under it. Obviously, this is. Safest. Screw, so. That's probably safest, but it's only safest if you mount it correctly, like we showed you in another car. Yeah, if you mount it behind the axle in the trunk area, which you, you can do, it's not often you can. A lot of guys do. But it's, I don't think that back there is as safe as that in front, because the unibody car has a crumple going back there, and you get hit hard in the ass end, it crumples up, it, it caves in. And if you reinforce it, all you're doing is transferring all that to the main cage of the car. That's how you wreck race cars. So uh, putting it in front of the axle, Optimal for weight distribution, not optimal for filling it with gas. But as you can see, he may have figured out a way to do it. Amy and Kurt both climbed in with a funnel and filled the car up with gas in their car. So, uh, I'm too old. <laughs> yeah. And for those of you who don't know, he's my uncle, not my father. Um, yeah, so obviously, in our opinion, best position for it is in front of the rear axle. You have to build a firewall around it when you do that. Your back seat used to be a little more fabrication. A lot of guys found them in the back of the car. Put it on scales. Figure it out. My scale numbers are always on the internet too. You guys have seen those. So that's it. Trace wisely.